Hello, this is Chuck Carnival, and with this video I'm going to look at Amazon from several different valuation perspectives. I'm going to start out by taking a look at Amazon and their historical earnings. And what you see on this graph is a plotting of Amazon's earnings per share since 1998. And what's most striking about this is you see they generated, the firm generated losses through 2000 and one, and then they generated a little profit in 2002. Then they had a period of time where profits grew rather nicely, and they actually did quite well going through the recession, but then they had significant dearth of profitability from 2010 into 2012, and likewise in 2014. Now, what's interesting though is they did generate some pretty extraordinary profit growth in 2015 and 16. And I might add, although I have it scrolled out here, I'm looking strictly at historical data here, forecasts for profitability going forward are actually significantly higher than these historical norms. Nevertheless, the real point here is that Amazon has not really been a very profitable company since its inception in May of 1998. What's really remarkable is when you bring price into the equation here. Now I'm going to add monthly closing stock prices. And what you see here is probably the most extreme disconnect from price and earnings that I've ever seen of any company I've ever looked at. Obviously, there's no relationship between Amazon's price and its earnings per share. Now the current blended PE ratio as reported by FastGraph is 172. If you check other sites that might use things like trailing 12 month earnings, you might see a PE as high into the 180s, and if you use something like Morningstar where they report a forward PE, you might see it as low as, as 60 times earnings, the PE. So, the, But nevertheless, no matter which of those metrics or whichever way you measure the price earnings ratio of this company, it's extremely high and completely out of sync with the company's ability to generate profits. However, as I talked about in the article, written part of this article, that's really not been the objective of Jeff Bezos, the um, founder of Amazon. He's not really been focused on profitability. In fact, the company has encouraged investors to look at cash flows. However, before I look at Amazon from the perspective of cash flows, I'd like to go into our fund graphs or financial underlying numbers and look a little deeper under the hood at some, of, at some important profitability metrics of Amazon. I'd like to start by looking at Amazon's gross and net profit margins. The red bar here is gross profit margins. The blue bar is net profit margins. Now you can see that they have a reasonably um, good level of gross profitability that's, that's ranged in the 20% category. And last year, they actually increased their gross margin to 35%. However, as you see by the dark blue bars here, there's been very, very little net profitability. In fact, in many years, they've actually had negative net profit margin. So suffice it to say that Amazon has not been a very profitable company throughout its story. However, even though the company has not really been able to generate much in the way of profits, when you look at the company from a standpoint of gross revenues, you see that there has been extraordinary growth in this company. Gross revenues in 1996 came in at about 16 million, and last year they came in at 135, almost 136 billion dollars. So from a production of gross revenue growth, this company has been extraordinary, maybe one of the best or fastest growing companies I've ever examined. On the other hand, all this revenue growth did not come cheaply. Next, I'm going to add cost of goods sold to this graph. And as you can see, Amazon has spent a significant amount of money in order to generate this revenue growth. Last year alone, they spent over $88 billion. For the sake of convenience, this next metric here I looked at, I'm looking at are common shares outstanding. As I mentioned in the article, Amazon has actually been increasing their share count. A lot of it has to do with the fact of how they compensate their employees. But the point I want to make with this is this is a growth stock, and it's a very capital-hungry growth stock, as we just saw a second ago. And so not only does the company not pay a dividend or return capital to shareholders through share buybacks, they actually have continuously increased their capital structure in order to meet their 
significant needs for growth and for capital to fund that growth. Now, as promised earlier, I'm not going to take a look at Amazon, as I refer to in the written part of the article, their prodigious operating cash flow growth. So the metric I have up here now is operating cash flow growth. And as you can see, Amazon has grown operating cash flows by 37.5%. There was some debate that I mentioned in the article and referenced in a link to another article about how Amazon actually calculates their free cash flow. But there's been very little debate, and it's also less manipulative, that the company has generated significant operating cash flow growth. And you can see that very clearly here. And I'm also going to add in full estimates here. Estimated cash flow growth for the next three or four years is expected, or excuse me, two to three years is expected to be extraordinary, as you see here. So, um, you know, that's important, but I want to just look at what they've actually historically achieved. So I'm going to go back to looking at their their historical cash flow growth over time. And as I mentioned, it's been over 37%. Now, when you bring prices into the equation here, something becomes clearly obvious, and that is that Amazon's stock price has followed and correlated to their operating cash flow growth very, very nicely over time. Their average price to cash flow has been about 24, 25 times cash flow, which is approximately where they're trading at right now. Um, and again, I'm going to add some forecast data in here. If you look at forecast data, you know, that actually looks like there's a lot of room for this company to grow. Now, we can argue whether this is relevant or not, or whether it's practical or not. But the one thing you can't argue with, in my opinion, by looking at this graphic that I have up here right now, is that over time, the market has clearly valued this stock based on its operating cash flows. Now, moving on then, I'd like to take a look at what kind of performance Amazon has actually generated. I've got a performance calculation here from December 31st, 1998, through yesterday's closing price. And a $10,000 one-time investment in Amazon on that date would have grown to $181,000 through May 23rd or yesterday. That's a 17% annualized rate of return. Or, and since the company pays no dividends, that's, you know, that's your total return is strictly from capital appreciation. That compares to only 5% on the S&P 500. However, just to add to the drama of that historical performance, let's go back as far as I can with fast graphs at least to the year the company went public, which was May of 1997. But I can only measure from December of 1997. So had you invested $10,000 in Amazon shares on December 31st, 1997, you'd have paid $5.02 a share. Through yesterday's close, that, that price has gone to $971.54. That would attend $10,000 into $1,935,000 plus, or averaging a 31.2% compound rate of return, which I might add is very consistent with the company's historical cash flow growth. Compare that to the same investment in the S&P 500, you can clearly see that Amazon has been a remarkable long-term growth stock, as I mentioned in the article. Now, I'd like to conclude this video by talking a little bit about forecasting in the future. I'm losing the forecasting calculators of fast graphs here, which are collecting data from analysts. As you can see, there are a lot of analysts following this company. And forecast earnings growth is actually expected to be pretty strong at over 30% going out to 2020. However, as I you know indicated in the beginning of this video, the price is really disconnected from those earnings potential of the company. However, if I swip, switch to operating cash flow and look at what the analysts are forecasting for operating cash flow, which has clearly been the most important valuation metric with this company, we see operating cash flow growth expected of averaging around 25 or 26% going forward. Now, there are very few analysts giving us operating cash flow growth, but when I look at the historical record of how accurate analysts have been, with forecasting Amazon's operating cash flow growth, whether they were making their forecast one year in advance or two years in advance, they've been very, very accurate in forecasting this. And so that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but what it does perhaps suggest 
is that Amazon may in fact actually be attractively valued at today's level when you're looking at it from an operating cash flow point of view. If I go back to normal operating cash flow multiples, as I kind of alluded to, something between 25 and 26 times operating cash flow has been a reasonable valuation. This is all the historical normal price to cash flows of Amazon going back in history. And you can see these numbers are all in those 20 range. So if cash flows are going to continue to be the driver of Amazon stock price, the company actually looks attractively valued at this level based on that metric. However, when you look at earnings, it's a different story altogether. I hope this has given you some additional insights into how the market has been valuing Amazon. It's clearly been a cash flow story. Um, and there's no question about that. And it's even been the goal of the management of this company to basically try to direct investors' attentions to cash flow versus earnings. The company's very hungry for growth, and they're generating very strong cash flow growth, which is how the market has been valuing this stock historically. So when you look at Amazon from earnings, it doesn't make any sense. When you look at it from operating cash flows, you get a different perspective. The real question is, are you, can you believe the company is going to continue to generate this kind of cash flow growth? And can you possibly believe that the market's going to continue to value the stock on cash flows and expect very little in the way of earnings performance? You make the choice.